once again welcome you all to MSP lecture series on advanced transmetallic chemistry. This is the 11th lecture in the series of 60 lectures. In my previous lecture I started discussion on valence bond theory concept and its uh, utility for explaining bonding in coordination chemistry. Today uh, let me start from where I have stopped. We all know that uh, valence bond theory uh, was uh, developed by Linus Pauling using hybridization concept and essentially he started hybridization theory uh, to explain bonding in uh, methane. In case of methane he thought that we have S2 P2 electronic configuration. What he thought was first one electron from S orbital will be promoted to P orbital and then these 3 P orbital would interact with uh, 1s orbital of hydrogen to form 3 bonds having very similar uh, properties and the fourth one would interact with uh, 1 electron left in 2s orbital with 1s1 orbital of hydrogen and then in that case you are supposed to have 2 type of bonds but the studies showed that methane has all the bonds equivalent as a result the assumption was uh, thought of flaw and then they thought that prior to the bond formation between carbon and hydrogen uh, this S electron will be promoted to P orbital and then 3 P orbital and S orbital would combine together to generate a set of uh, 4 hybrid orbitals having the composition sp3 and these 4 sp3 would interact equally with 4 hydrogen atoms to have methane molecule with the tetrahedral geometry and uh, and later that was extended to uh, all main group compounds and then they made an attempt to expand that to coordination complexes as well so for his hybridization theory he was awarded Nobel Prize in 1954 uh, and then again in 1962 he got another Nobel Prize but not for chemistry but for peace and he is one of the 4 individuals to have won 2 Nobel Prizes. Okay. The first one being Marie Curie. So, let us try to understand about hybridization concept. So, according to valence bond theory the number of hybrid orbitals formed equals number of atomic orbital mixed for example if you consider sp3 we have s orbital and 3 p orbitals are there that results in the formation of 4 sp3 hybrid orbitals that says that number of hybrid orbitals formed equals number of atomic orbitals mixed. The type of hybrid orbital formed depends on the type of atomic orbitals mixed as I mentioned if you take s and uh, 2p then it will be having sp2 with uh, you know 2 third p property and 1 third s property and many types of hybridization are also known and the most common type of hybridization observed among main group compounds are sp, sp2, sp3, sp3d and sp3d2. And of course, we can always debate about sp3d and sp3d2 among main group compounds. But now let us focus on simple compounds to understand sp, sp2, sp3 hybridization before we extend this concept to coordination compounds. Now let us consider sp hybridization, always we should remember to write this one. And now let us consider simple compound having uh, simple electronic configuration having 1s2 to 2s2 and then 2p ok. So, here 2p 2s 1s. So, 1s we have 2 electrons let us say we have 2 electrons and here we do not have any electron. Now what would happen is let us try to mix 2s 2 electrons with one of the 2p preferably uh, pz in that case let me write 2 like this and then other 2 uh, unutilized ones would remain same. 
So, then here we have 2 electrons that means we generated 2 sp3 hybrid orbitals having 1 electron each ok they are valence orbitals and sp. So, now what would happen to this one? So, since this is core electron does not participate in bonding. So, bonding we should consider only valence electrons and this we call it as sp hybridization. And of course, if you are interested in I have also given uh, here orbital wave functions and here S and P characters in sp hybrid are 50 percent each and this is how you can write uh, wave function. So, here you can see 2s is there and then 2px it is combined to generate sp hybrid in x direction and similarly another hybrid in x direction of course, with turning exactly opposite to each other and it appears like the 2 would be looking something like this ok. Now, we have 2 sp orbital disposed at an angle of 180 and now atom coming should overlap here and overlap here uh, having a linear geometry. The generation of 2 sp hybrid orbitals from 2 sp and 2 p x orbitals are shown and if we choose 2 s and 2 p y hybrid will be along y axis and if we choose 2 p z it will be along z axis. Now, consider sp 2 hybridization this is for sp 2 and let me write here how we can arrive at sp 2 in the same way. Again consider 1 s and 2 s we have 2 electrons here and 2 electrons here and we have 2 p orbitals and what we have is 1 electron here and 1 electron here. So, that means we are considering carbon with 2 s to 2 p to electronic configuration and now if it undergoes hybridization let us s p 2. So, 1 will be left we have 3 orbitals 3 sp 2 orbitals are there. having one electron each. And of course, here as usual this core electrons would remain say do, they do not participate in bonding and uh, one should write like this wave functions for x direction and y direction and, and z is not used here. So, this is how you should be able to write for sp 2 and here you can see 2 s is interacting with 2 p x to have an sp 2 hybrid uh, in x direction. Then what happens it remains intact in x direction then when 2 s is overlapping with the 2 uh, p y that wa what happens is initially it is orthogonal it makes a anti clockwise rotation by 30 degrees to orient in this direction. So, that the angle between them is 120 and then when 2 s interacts with the 2 p y another one. So, it can interact in opposite direction with the clockwise 30 degree away from the orthogonality to have 120. So, basically you will be having something like this with uh, each s p 2 is 120 degree apart. So, of course, here one should be very clear you can use any of this orbital to explain, but you should be very clear about the directions and the plane in which you are talking about these molecules or you place this orbitals in that plane. So, if you are considering x y atomic orbitals it will be in x y plane and if you are considering y and z orbitals it will be the, the trigonal plane or molecule will be in along y z plane or if you are considering x and z. So, the molecule should be considered kept on x z plane ok that one should remember. Now, let us consider sp 3 hybridization again 1 s 2 s and 2 p. So, we have 2 electrons here 2 electrons here and 2 electrons here and if I am considering sp 3 
what would happen? I have 1, 2, 3 and 4 and now we have one electron each okay, and this remains as it is 4 and we do not have any orbits left now. So, these are sp3 hybrid orbitals. This is how you can uh, write sp show sp3 hybrid orbitals. So, this is not a real observation and it is just a formalism and valence state cannot be observed by spectroscopic techniques that one should bear in mind. And then here uh, the wave functions are written for uh, 4 uh, sp3 hybrid orbitals of, of course, when s is overlapping with uh, p x p y p z you know that uh, it is symmetrical. So, everything is positive and then with Px and Py and it is Pz direction. So, that means now they are disposed at an angle of 107.8. This is how this 4 sp3 would look like and it is uh, very convenient if you imagine these 4 orbitals inside a cube and if you place the central atom at the center of a cube and place the ligands on alternate corners, this is how it looks like. They are 4 peripheral atoms are disposed to 4 alternate corners of a cube and it makes a perfect tetrahedral geometry. And in this one as I mentioned S and P characters are respectively 25 percent and 75 percent in each of these orbitals. So, let us now extend this uh, valence bond theory to metal complexes. Let us start with the D3 electronic configuration. Let me consider a metal ion having uh, 3 electrons in its d orbital. So, now in this case what happens of course, you should also consider it is 3 d we have to consider 4 s and 4 p also this is 4 s this is if it is this is 3 d this is 4 s and this is 4 p. So, in this one what you can do is if it is complex is forming a octahedral compound with coordination number 6 in order to explain the bonding we have to go for utilizing all these 2 plus 3 plus 3 6 orbitals and 6 orbital we should use here and remaining this would remain intact. So, now this is the hybridization we are talking about and here if 6 ligands are coming with 12 electrons they will be accommodated. Something like this. So, since here inner 3D is used for accommodating electrons through hybridization. So, here 2 d and 1 s and 3 p orbitals are used this is d 2 s p 3 hybridization. So, you can explain uh, this is called inner orbital complex. complex and also this is paramagnetic because we have 3 unpaid electrons are there. So, some of these properties can be explained and the geometry is octahedral. Okay. So, that means here uh, whether we are considering homoleptic molecule or heteroleptic molecules or we have more than one type of ligand even M, A, B, C, D, E, F if you consider 6 different type of ligands still uh, the hybridization is D 2 sp 3 and it still is an inner orbital complex and still it is paramagnetic and still it is octahedral. But to what extent octahedral geometry is regular or distorted that information does not come from valence bond theory. Let us look into D 5 electronic configuration.
So, we have 5 electrons and of course, if I am considering 3D, I have here 4s and 4p is there. So, now again once again if I assume that uh, D5 metal ion is forming an octahedral complex, then 6 ligands are coming with the 12 electrons that has to be accommodated in appropriate metal orbitals for that one. Now what happens inner orbital we do not have any vacancy as a result what we should do is we should use 4D orbitals here and of course 4D also we have 5 and I have, we have to choose uh, 2 orbitals here and then we can consider this for uh, bonding. In that case we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 are there. And then here we have 5 as usual metal ligand electrons are accommodated in these 6 hybrid orbitals. Now we are using S and P and outer D orbitals as a result what happens in the same sequence we can write the hybridization as S P 3 D 2 hybridization. So, here we have used outer d orbital as a result it is called outer orbital complex complex and still it is paramagnetic. Also you can call it as high spin complex. high spin complex. Before we look into D8 electron configuration, is any alternate uh, hybridization is possible uh, with this one? If you use strong field ligand, what would happen? Say something like this is there and in this case what happens? Metal electrons from these two will be getting paired here and we have and as a result what happens two orbits will be uh, vacant here. So, now again you write 4s and 4p. Okay. Now, there is a possibility of utilizing inner d orbital for hybridization same thing we shall do it now something like this and now we try to accommodate 12 electrons coming from 6 ligands. Again we have octahedral geometry and now it is once again S D2 SP3 hybridization. So that means with the D5 electronic configuration both SP3 D2 as well as D2 SP3 hybridization are possible and how it is possible valence bond theory does not say how inner orbital complex are formed and how high spin and low spin are formed it does not say, but when the electronic configuration is like this that information comes from magnetic moment and one spin only magnetic moment from that one one can speculate whether a D8, D5 uh, metal ion would prefer SP3 D2 or T2 SP3. The ligand field does not come into picture at all that means ligand field strength or the strength of the ligand is not pronounced in valence bond theory. Now let us look into D8 electronic configuration. This is 3D, this is 4S, and this is 4P. So consider 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, here we have this electronic configuration is there now and in this case what we can do is if the since more electrons are there we assume that metals having more electrons say in their d orbital tend to have lower coordination number. Let us look into first 4 coordination in 4 coordination without disturbing these electrons how to make bond that means S is available, 4S is available, 4P is available if the coordination number is 4 we can think of simply SP3 hybridization 
that means 4 ligands coming with 8 electrons can be accommodated in this fashion. So, that means a D8 system can have sp3 hybridization with fluorination number 4 and in contrast so let us consider like this and this also we shall try to pair up as a result we will be left with one d orbital now so now we have 4p now one more is there again the strategy is not different still it prefers 4 coordination number but inner when the d orbital is available as a result what happens it try to utilize this one in this fashion. So that means one d orbital and one s orbital and two p orbitals are utilized. Now if the four ligands are approaching now so d is there and yes p2 is there that means this four ligands would give eight electrons that are accommodated in these four dsp2 hybrid orbitals so here it is tetrahedral here it is square planar geometry but on the other hand if the metal still prefer to have six coordination in that case what would happen? And then we have 4D, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, in this case what happens since even if you uh, pair one of the electron one orbital alone does not help in making inner orbital complex if the coordination number is 6. In that case what happens? It would try to go for outer orbital complex. So, here 12 electrons are accommodated. So, now this if you see again this is sp3, d2 and octahedral. So, this explains now the possibility of having different geometries and different coordination number for a given electronic configuration. For D8 you can have sp3 tetrahedral arrangement, for D8 you can have dsp2 square planar arrangement of the same 4 ligands or if it is ready to accommodate 6 ligands then it has to be a outer orbital complex with sp3 d2 hybridization so that it can have octahedral geometry. So, this kind of information comes from valence bond theory and uh, let us try to extend for some more molecules before we proceed further to take up crystal field theory until that have an excellent time reading chemistry.